so let's see uh, 13 f-150 engine computer gonna be cloning so this one's the new one the donor this one was the uh, original one here so we're gonna go ahead and use the obd star to do this clone so we go ahead and pull up this is the ecu that we're working with and let's hit guide to see which interface we will be using um and as far as the one that i have here is this guy so we'll use the p003 and go from there let's check our wiring pinout that's the computer we are working with and with this we'll go ahead and make our connections all right we've got our connections made we are powered up on our interface and we'll go ahead and hit start bench uh, you have to pick the correct interface hit ok alright so we'll attempt to connect okay so we are in we've made a connection uh, we will read and save the EEPROM and flash. Okay, looks like we've read it successfully. We'll go ahead and save it and go on from there. All right, that is saved. So now we will read the flash. This will probably take a little bit longer since it is a, uh, a bigger uh, uh, file. All right, so we finally finished reading the entire flash. Uh, we'll go ahead and save that and then move over to the donor. So there's the donor connected, same way. We are powered up on our VCI. And now let's go ahead and connect. All right, so we are successfully in uh, with this uh, connection now. So we will do the same. Uh, I'm going to read these even though we don't need them, but just to have a backup. All right, so that was a good read. Um, I'll do the flash and then I'll, I'll bring you guys back when it's time to write. All right, so as you can tell, we finished writing the flash. Everything looks to be uh, have done and completed successfully. So there you go. Just uh, that's a shot of. Um, let me get you a clear shot of what these look like. So there's the uh, Ford Bosch sticker. This is considered an MEDG 17.0. So. There you go. That's how you clone one of these with the OBD star. Welcome back to the channel. Tonight we will be working on this 2013 Ford F-150. Um, its current state is a no crank, no start. Um, and it was actually uh, trailered over here from Indiana by a viewer of the channel who found me uh, from watching and researching uh, my last F-150 no start video. Um, he tried to uh, do some things at home, uh, got to a certain point, and asked me if I'd be willing to take a look at it. Previously, before bringing the truck here, he was thinking that the engine computer was possibly faulty. He ended up getting a donor used computer, shipped both of those, the original and donor, over to me. I ended up cloning it and then sending it back to him. After that, it made no difference, and that's at that point where he asked if he could bring it over. And just a little bit of a quick backstory: He had removed the engine, basically uh, ended up rebuilding it, and put it back in. After doing so, 
it's in this state of basically no crank, no start. Um, it was running and everything prior to it, but I believe it was down uh, without an engine for quite a bit. And so he did mention that he tried to make sure that it didn't look like any rodents uh, got in any of the harness as best as he could tell. And um, he didn't have the hood shut, so he doesn't think any water got in. He did mention he did kind of wash it while the engine was out, but that's about it. So, um, what he has told me is basically he has no communication with a scanner or a code reader, and there's no Prendo lights, and it won't crank, obviously, so on and so forth. So, to me, it sounds like we will be dealing with a bus communication problem, not letting the vehicle crank and start and uh, be able to be scanned. And so with that, I'm going to try to formulate a plan, diagnostic plan, based off, off of what he told me and what he's experiencing, and kind of go from there and see if we can find what's going on. All right, and so we'll start by showing you what the customer is talking about. You can tell he's mentioned the mileage is basically blanked out. There's no uh, gear indicated as to which one we are in and so on and so forth. So those are some of the first uh, signs that he noticed. Um, I'm going to naturally attempt to try to scan it. And I also have my breakout box for the DLC. And I want to uh, here eventually look at the bus. One thing that is interesting is when I go to start the... Uh, diagnostic uh, process here the tool this launch tool is able to bring this portion up now this is uh, part of the uh, like automatic identification of the tool it picks up from somewhere I, I was not expecting to get this much information or this far uh, which is just the first step which is identification of the vehicle um, based off of what they told me that uh, they couldn't get any communication. So um, it, it's picking it up from somewhere. Now, there are two buses on the DLC, so I'll show you that. So maybe because of that, it's being able to um, pick the fact that this is an F-150, the 13, and there's the VIN number, so on and so forth. Now, from here on out, we will go to the uh, diagnostic, where it will then go forward into trying to scan the vehicle, or get into try to scan the vehicle. All right, so you can tell that that last 10% of the trying to continue forward, um, it just hung there at 90%, and it was just just stuck. Um, so it cannot go any further, uh, despite the fact that um, it is picking up the info. So, again, um, yeah, we can call it no communication uh, w with uh, any of the modules, and so... Um, that's verified, again, which we kind of already knew, that we're dealing with a bus problem. So, next thing that I want to do is, because you can have many things uh, affect the bus, uh, I want to, first and foremost, since I am connected and powered up, I'm just going to quickly scope the bus and take a look and see if we are dealing with an operational bus that's sort of talking or a bus that's shorted to either power or ground or a bus that looks to be corrupted. That can maybe try to help us uh, have an idea of what possibly might be going on, but I want to just look at the condition of the bus that the... Um, major uh, modules are going to be on which will be on 6 and 14 as far as the pins um, assuming it's going to be like a high speed uh, can bus and so that might help again determine 
a direction uh, despite the fact that we cannot talk with the scanner. After that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and unhook the battery and I want to take an ohm reading of the bus and see if we've got 120 ohms or 60 ohms. Again, that will give us some sort of direction as to uh, possibly what's going on. All right, so there is our bus. Let's go ahead and grab a snapshot and see if it looks corrupted or not. We obviously have some bus activity and it actually does not, it doesn't look bad at all. Um, that's actually pretty um, clean or cleanish, good looking, yeah. Good looking bus there. Now let's check our levels. So our starting point should be around two and a half, um, which is there. Let's check and see where it goes to. And then we'll do the same for the red, um, which I would bet to assume red is also good. Um, so actually it, it's... The bus is, I don't call it fully operational. So there you go. Two and a half is starting point for both the blue and red for can high, can low. And then we get our uh, about just over one volt of uh, upward and downward travel for its operational communication uh, portion. Now, Again, what I was trying to refer to is the bus is not like corrupted, weird looking, um, looks kind of proper. Our levels seem to be kind of good and okay. And it's it's obviously not shorted uh, to power or ground. So that tells us that uh, we've got kind of a, a clean bus here. Um, and most likely, again, not dealing with a corruption issue, shorter issue, uh, giving us a no communication. So we are now going to move on to the own test just to see what that yields us. Okay, and so quickly before we go ahead and check the uh, ohm reading, um, this is the DLC connector, so 1 through 16. Uh, and this is a diagram of the computer data lines as it's referred to in the uh, service information. Uh, we are concerned with what's going to be this high speed CAN bus and here's our PCM and then um, that branches off with the this um, white and then white with blue twisted pair of wires that then tie into all the modules on that bus all share the uh, same wire colors and that's how they communicate and so on and so forth. So um, and those start at 6 and 14 over here. And so what we're going to do with our own test, and I, I usually don't use it often um, or as often as I should or could, it's actually more if uh, I could because I deal with a lot of, as you can see, German vehicles, which that one actually is a bus problem. Um, and those will have basically a gateway that um, does not let you tie in to the rest of the bus via the DLC. So it, it's almost useless to try to look for the... 60 ohms or 120 ohms so on and so forth so this one is directly tied to the dlc we're going to take a measurement and what that's going to tell us is if our bus is intact completely and there's no openings there's no um issues with it not completing basically kind of like the circuit let's call it we should have a reading of 60 ohms and that's going to be from two modules on the high-speed CAN bus uh, having each a 120 ohm uh, resistor and if both are online let's call it 
then we'll have 20 ohm, I mean, excuse me, a 60 ohm reading here. So I'm trying to see if it's basically going to be intact or not, again, for some direction. Okay, and that's the PCM, the one that I ended up cloning. And so let's go take a look at the ohm reading. All right, so without touching anything on the vehicle, we are getting a 120 ohm reading. That tells us that uh, our bus circuit, let's call it, is basically not uh, complete, not fully intact. And we are only reaching out and accessing one of the modules one of the two that has one of the 120 ohm resistors. So um, let me find out which ones have it and then we'll move on from there. Okay, so just reading service information. Looks like um, it's going to be as far as having the resistors, the PCM is going to be one and then the um, DCM is going to be the other on this one. So what I just quickly want to do is unplug this, take it, you know, off of the harness, which technically, theoretically, we're going to take it off of the CAN bus circuit and see if we have a change. That'll tell us which one of the two uh, modules with the resistor we were reading and all right so no change at all with the PCM unplugged as far as the uh, ohm reading that's going to basically confirm to us that reason why it looks like we don't have communication no prendle no crank no nothing is because the PCM is offline, let's call it. And I know I don't even have to, but this is just how I am. I like to just verify. Um, I am going to show you. This is the BCM, so there we go. We unplug this connector off of the BCM and we lose our 120 ohm so um, again verifying what we basically already knew it's also confirming service information telling us which of the other ones had the resistor and there you go so what we know is we have to deal with attacking the PCM portion for some reason Alright, so I'm kind of just curious to see if I can get any um, communication at all from any modules on the bus or if it's just going to be the PCM. Um, since we can't get in this way, let's see if we can get in by building the vehicle.
All right, so let's see what we get when we do a full scan. All right, so we it looks like we are able to talk to some of the modules. All right, so here we go. Um, we're able to manually get in and then perform a complete scan. And naturally, we're going to have some bus communication codes. Now, that's on the ABS. I would imagine that the ABS is on the high speed. And so we're getting power steering control module, PCM, and uh, let's see, the four-wheel drive clutch control module. So accessory protocol, body control, global instrument panel. So that's at least communicating. Let's see, airbag, parking, airbag, trailer brake. Okay, and then all these are also communicating. All right, so we have some communication. Let's take a look, see where the ABS is. Okay, so here is the ABS. And as you can see, we are only on the high-speed CAN bus. So that is sort of a good sign, but it helps verify that um, because we've got a good looking bus there does mean and shows us that we are able to communicate with something on that bus. Um, and for now, it's this ABS and I'm pretty sure, yeah, we spoke with the airbag and I think this guy as well. Um, we're not talking to power steering or possibly transfer case. Uh, here's the uh, instrument panel. Uh, but that looks like that's on two buses. So we can't uh, fully guarantee we talk through the high speed uh, with that guy. But so on and so forth. Um, our bus is not corrupted, it's not down. We are able to talk to some of them. And so we need to figure out why we're not talking to the PCM and, and or um, power steering and kind of go from there. Okay, and just to show you guys, so I've spent quite a bit of time trying to decipher um, some information or a plan of attack. And quickly to show you, this is the bus thing that I was talking about, about where the uh, resistors were. So there's the PCM, and this is for the high-speed CAM bus. And here is the other terminating resistor that's on the BCM, again, for this bus. Uh, so that's where I found that. And then the next portion is this guy here so this is now factory wiring diagram and there is our abs here's the high speed can lines and let's see they go right there to the splice and then they come over this way this is uh let's double check Okay, so that's power steering, and then there's these two that come down, and that's going to be the PCM. So, what we know from the scanner, from doing the scan after manually identifying, is from this splice up, we talk to ABS, but we're not talking to the power steering or the PCM based off the trouble code that uh, the modules were complaining about. And this right here is a common 
denominator for those two modules that we're not talking. So that's where I want to go next. And so I'll show you the, as far as what service information is telling us where it's at, is that 139 right there, it is supposedly over here by the battery basically. This is the positive uh, cable here, this green box with some fuses and it, it's pointing like right next to it as far as location. All right, so you saw what I ended up finding as far as the in-service information regarding the wiring diagram layout and then that one particular connector. Um, just to sort of explain, normally when you have a module that's not communicating, you want to get to the module, check for all your powers, uh, all your grounds, make sure those are good, and test out fine if you want to load them. And you also want to make sure your wake-up circuit is also present, if it has one. And obviously the communication lines, you want to have good activity at the connector for whatever module you are about to condemn. And so I was researching into trying to get to that point with the PCM. But after I found out that there's that one connector that leads to two modules that are having trouble codes for not talking that's where i wanted to go next and i'll just keep this short and sweet just to get to hopefully an ending point um, this is that green box as far as in the diagram and location for the connector was somewhere down there and believe me i've looked um, through here there over here this way and I cannot seem to find it. This is the only thing that's standing out to me and it's not 100% making sense as far as the wire colors. But the, you can't always 100% rely on that um, other than the fact that we do have, let's see, hopefully we can show you. So we've got on um, the top here we've got a white and then white and blue um, right there so I know those are high-speed cam bus lines um, this white green and white red obviously are not but this is the only thing with cam bus wire colors in it as far as connectors so I ended up unplugging, no bent pins, and then I looked again closely, and what do we see there? <laughs> Let me try to zoom in, but I think you can see it well enough. In the top two are the can bus. But if you look there at the bottom, it gives a good picture of what's going on. There are green crusties, and the few times I've unplugged this and plugged that in, looks like I started to scratch some of that off. So, what I believe is going on is that uh, the two pins up top, that those bus lines, I bet are the ones that are going to the PCM and power steering, so on and so forth. And it's got such a layer of green corrosion that it's not fully making metal-metal contact, keeping communication um, away from the PCM. Now I could check power ground, everything here to make sure we've got that, and most likely will not have good bus activity being that I'm hoping this is what leads to there in the power steering so what I want to do to start off is I'm gonna clean this one try to get good metal metal and see if we get the Prindle back if we get communication back and so on and so forth and I'm hoping this is all that it is Cam bus communication problem 
from corrosion at one of the junction connectors. Okay, I got it clean, plugged in, PCM plugged in. I have not attempted anything yet. This will be the first power up of the vehicle. Let's see what we get. <laughs> Look at that red letter P there. And we got mileage. Huh, awesome. Green corrosion keeping us from uh, talking. So um, let's go ahead. Let's do an automatic health report. We should be able to pick up everything. I could do an ohm reading just to show you guys, but um, I got to power it down, so I might do that afterwards. Let's see. Let's make sure we're talking to the rest of the bus. Um, that's a good sign over there. So, let's see. ABS, BCM. PCM, there we go. Finally, yeah, power steering. All right, let's go ahead and clear everything. So this is definitely good signs. Customer's gonna be crazy happy. He's been waiting a while to get this started. Now the other thing, uh, keep in mind, this is a new engine. He rebuilt uh, at least the bottom end. Uh, he's gone through uh, new rods, pistons, rings, uh, a new used block, so on and so forth. So this has never run. And he that was one of the concerns he addressed with me is if I get to a point of figuring it out, he was kind of, I'll just say worrisome or worry about how I would go ahead and start the engine. Now, his mindset and thought is just the same exact as me. I cranked them for a while with fuel spark disabled. I just want to build oil pressure and and so on and so forth. And that's the same that he expressed. So I told him I could do it in that or I would promise to do it in that same way. But then once he brought it over and I realized um, that he'd be willing to uh, come by when I'm at a, a good point. Now, now, this is not the way I would normally operate, so on and so forth, but we worked something out to where I would get and restore communication. I would crank it here on my own with the key and everything, so we get normal operation of the vehicle, but obviously have the ignition disabled, and then he can come and we can do the first startup idle everything with him here. All right, let's see what it does. First crank up with the key. Alright, there we go. Um, that's where I'm stopping for right now. Uh, I'm going to get with the customer. If, if he's still wanting to do that uh, where he's here for the first time, we can arrange that. If not, I'll obviously film it, get it on camera for the first startup and so on and so forth. But we have figured out the problem. The no crank, no start situation was from a PCM not communicating on the bus. Our bus is okay. The communication, no corruption, no shorts. Uh, simply just not reaching the PCM. All from corrosion. Now if you remember, he did wash the engine bay. And I think it was a couple times he told me. Um, so that water must have just settled on them pins. Corrosion, so on and so forth. 
Now, there's obviously possibility of any other areas having the same thing, but for now, we are operating, we're cranking on our own as it should with a normal operating vehicle. All right.